Hey guys, welcome back. This is Naresh. So today we will learn about the DevOps pipeline and what are the tools which are used in the DevOps pipeline. So in many industries now they are adopting the DevOps, but still they are confusion like uh, what tools do we new use and what are technologies which we should learn in order to adopt to the DevOps pipeline. Okay, so I will show you a picture which will clear some of your doubts. All right, so if you see that uh, here I have just uh, shown you a picture and I will just explain each and everything one by one. Okay, one second. All right, so here, if you see here, the first picture here is for the Jira and for the requirement management. So this is basically nothing but you know, you should have one tool which can handle all your requirements and manage all your requirements. It can be Jira, it can be C Agile, or it can be other tools which is uh, in your company. Okay, so you should always learn these one of the tools. And then there should be a tool for the test case management. So wherever, like by looking to requirements, you will write some test cases, either in the Excel file or either with some test case management tool like Zypher or CHI. Okay, and there should be one, a defect management tool where you can log all your defects. So these tools, you should have uh, some knowledge of all these tools so that you can relate to the DevOps pipeline and you can work with that. Okay, now the second thing is uh, automation engine and developer. So here are the automation engine and developer. So these engineers and developers will get some inputs from requirements or from the test case management. And according to that, they will start preparing their code. The developer will prepare the code which is applicable to their application. Uh, for example, they can maybe they are working on the mobile application or web application. An automation engineer will prepare the code for the automation scripts which they want to test later on. Okay. So every all the scripts will be written in some kind of a tool like Eclipse or IntelliJ. So whatever whatever editor which you feel comfortable, you can create that. Okay, and uh, you can also use a build tool like a Maven and Gradle. And one more thing, because we are working on something, we are creating something, maybe it will require some more jar files. So instead of uh, calling the jar file from a public repository like this, we should always call the jar file from some local repository. Uh, artifact repository within our company okay so whenever we call some jar file like example i am calling a jar file for test ng it will look for the artifact repository if it's there or not if it's not there it will go to public repository download that into the artifact repository and then download to your eclipse okay so in devops this is the way how you work so there are certain advantages of that first of all let's say if my public repository is not available sometime but it's still i would be have a local artifact repository from which i can download the jar files and the second thing would be, let's say if you want to uh, share your code, for example, you are working on Selenium framework and you want to share your code with other projects, then you can put the jar file here. And this will be all automatic. Once you uh, make some changes in Selenium framework, when you do a build, it will automatically deploy here into the artifact repository, which other projects can use. Okay. And uh, you also need to do some unit testing. So either you can use a Cucumber, uh, BDD, or you can use JUnit or TestNG. So JUnit is mostly used by the developers and TestNG is used mostly by the engineers, automation engineers, okay? Once you are done with that, what you can do, you can also do some API testing. So API testing can be done on Postman, REST Assured or SOAP UI. So these are the tools which you should have knowledge if you want to do the API testing. And when everything is done, you can commit your code into the Git repository or any source code management like uh, SVN also, okay? and uh, once you uh, commit your code then the other stage will happen it will it will trigger a job into some orchestration tool like bamboo or jenkins and that will again build your code and that code once build it you know it will try to get the jar files from your local repository itself so once you get a jar file after that again it will do a unit testing and one more important tool which is this one which is a sonar cube okay so the separate video for this for sonar cube so this tool will go ahead and analyze your code, whatever mistake which we have done in code, it will analyze it and it will give us a report that what are, what are things we have to make it correct. Once the code has been redeployed, what we can do, we can deploy it to the test environment. So there are many ways through which you can deploy to the test environment. Docker is one of the ways which you should always learn if you want, if you are working uh, in a DevOps or if you want to work in DevOps. So learn dockers, learn how to deploy uh, your application into the test environment. And once it is deployed in the test environment, then the, the person who has created this code, the automation engineer, which has created this code here, 
in Selenium or any other technology they can use and they can execute that. If it's an APM related to mobile automation execution, they can always use the APM for execution. And for the visual testing execution, they can use the Apply tool. Okay, so you should have knowledge of all these tools uh, for execution of your test cases. Okay, and once it is done, once everything is correct, then you, again you have to deploy it into the different environment. For that, again, Nexus come into the picture, and then there are some other tools for the infrastructure provisioning in which you take care of the infrastructure. Uh, it's infrastructure related to Docker's or infrastructure related to production. You can do it through the Puppet, Kubernetes, and Ansible. So these are also the tools which you should take care of. And once it is done, then you can again deploy to pre-production, and then you can do performance testing. And for that, you can uh, get the knowledge of JMeter or LoadRunner to do the performance testing or any other performance tool which is applicable in your company. Okay. And once everything is done, you can deploy to production. Okay. So once you deploy to production, the things never stops because again, you have to continuously monitor and analyze that your code. So you can you can start monitoring and analyzing once you know it, your your code has come to the testing environment itself. So for monitoring, you can use Negios and Regan, and for analytics, you can use Plung, Soltrack, and other tools also, which is applicable in your company. Okay. So this is basically the entire tools which you should know. Uh, at least you should have proficiency. I would say not mastery, but at least proficiency in all these tools so that you can go ahead and work on any of the tool. If you're working in the DevOps uh, pipeline or if you're working in a DevOps kind of environment. So I have posted already many videos for most of the tools, for example, SonarCube, exec uh, Web Automation Execution, Selenium, APM, Apply Tools, Git, uh, Maven, and uh, you know uh, how you can use the Artifact Repository also, how you can deploy your code into by using Nexus. So all these videos are already available. So if you want, you can just go through these videos or you can uh, just refer different material which is available on the internet but at least go through these videos so that you can know the understanding and you can know what are the things you are required in the devops tool maybe some of the tools you already know but don't restrain yourself for example if you know selenium don't restrain yourself in selenium try to understand how exactly all these are connected to each other and how you should know every tool which is present here in this diagram okay so that's it from my side. Uh, if you have any, any question, you can always ask me in the description section. Thank you.